Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston. Uh, the previous video went over how to set up a GS16 base station with one watt. We're going to take a quick look at a GS18 RTK rover, and it applies for the GS16 as well. So how the components we need to make the 18 or the 16 a RTK rover, and the, the settings uh, to go through to configure the CS20, and we'll take a look at how to change the radio channels. So uh, first of all, if we have the GS16 rover, we'll have the pole, we're going to hook up to the CS20, got batteries, and we want to make sure we attach the antenna. So in this case, you have a GAD 108 or 109 with a GAT2 antenna. Uh, to get any range, we have to have that antenna hooked up to the external um, port on the, uh, the radio for the GS16. Same with the GS18. Um, there's a special port that the GAT28 antenna has to go in. Once again, if you don't have that, you will get more than 50 feet. And once again, we'll put that on the pole, the CS20. So it's just important that we have these antennas hooked up to make sure you get a half decent radio range. Um, so it, it depends on how high the base station radio antenna is, but also you have a half decent radio antenna hooked up to your GS16 or GS18 rover. We'll now take a look at in this case, we have a nice GS18 RTK rover. We'll take a look at the CS20 and go through the settings. Uh, we've already interfaced this to have it at Bluetooth. Uh, so if you were going to first set up to get Bluetooth, you'd have to go to settings, connections, go to GS connection wizard, pick the GS18, hit next via Bluetooth, then hit next. Then it'll actually find the serial number. And when you first do this, it'll give you a weird message saying, uh, you know, changing the, the default setting for the sensor, it'll reboot and then spin and then connect. But it's just a one time deal. They'll then store that setting to your work style. So, take a we're now hooked up, we're tracking satellites, and, and uh, we're going to reload a work style and check the settings out for radios. Okay, we have the CS20, and what we're going to do is we'll hit the star key favorites and number one's work style. We created a work style, our arrow over, it's called three radio. Let's go through the settings. And when we switch, you'll see the icon changes to a radio. So let's go through the settings. If I hit number one settings, number one connections, all the connections. Um, we'll come over to the GS connection tab, the second one over, and we'll hit F3 edit. And in here, the first, uh, screen is RTK data. So if I check that box, once again we want to pick the GS radio. So if I hit enter, we scroll down and make sure it's a GS radio. And then we hit F5 device. And we want to make sure we select the Satel M3TR4. And that's the device. And our data is going to be RTCM3. And um, receive network information. That, that's optional. You have to put that on or not. Um, so you can scroll down and turn that option off. What we'll do is we'll page over, and in this case you have RTK base. If it's sent a unique ID, I can check that box. So right now you'll see we're picking up radio data. If I have the wrong channel or wrong unique ID, we'll hit OK, and it stops transmitting data. So you'll be very careful if you're on a site where there's a bunch of RTK, like a seismic, you could have a unique ID. You've got to know what that base station was. So once again, if we hit edit, we go in to RTK base. If you're not sure, just uncheck it. If you don't use any, then it'll start pumping data. If you know what it is, in our case it was five, type it in and then hit OK. Then the RTK network can be undone. We're not using a network correction. And in this case, the arrow starts pumping in again. Down here's the control, and that allows us to change the channel. So what's important is we have the modulation type Satel 16 FSK that's got to match up with what the base station is using and also you have it on the right channel. So if I went to channel number one and changed it, we'll notice that the arrow will start pumping. Okay. So I'll show you a quicker way to change the channel. Uh, we changed it on the base, but on the rover I can click on this icon, go to change channel, and that's a nice hotkey. And once again, if we hit channel number two, there's our frequency, the right modulation, hit OK. And what we should see is this arrow should start pumping in. And what's needed, if I click on here, it's coming in every second. Okay? And then RTK data link status, that shows us all that good information. 
and now we're fixed. There's a radio icon. If I click on up here, or if I hit star, current position number six, it'll then show how far our baseline is. So we can page over. Right now we're right next to the base station, we're five feet away, but this is how far, how you can keep track how far you are from the base station. So typically with a one watt radio, you might pick up 2,500 feet to 5,000 feet. If the if it starts lagging and you're, you have more latency in your radio, look at how far away you are from the base station. So once again, if you're getting close to 5,000 feet, you're at the end of that one watt. In the, in the next video, we'll show a 35 watt and how to get longer range uh, on your radio. Now, the other thing is, as soon as you turn this on, if it's in radio mode and it sees it, you don't have to dial in like the network, it'll just start pounding in your fixed and look at your quality. You'll notice that with a radio with a shorter baseline length, the disadvantage you got a shorter baseline length, the advantage is your CQs will be a lot more accurate than a network correction at longer distances. So as we said earlier, the most accurate observations are a robotic total station. Second most accurate is a base rover with a radio. And the third most accurate is a network RTK solution. So that's a quick overview on how to set up the rover. Um, the most important thing is on that we have the 18 rovers have the GAT 28 antenna plugged in, like we showed earlier, into the GS18. You've got to have that plugged in to the right port, the radio port, to receive data. Okay, let's take a quick look. Let's pull the simulator up and uh, we'll skate back out. So, um, back to the main screen. I got it set in here for switch to base mode. So once again, I hit settings, customization, app visibility. Um, I have this turned on. You can move that around. Um, if I was now hooking up to our base station, and this example, we had a one watt GS16 base station. I go to settings, connections, or the connections, base station RGK. This is where I can change the channel. I can hit control and pick channel one or channel two. And if I had the internal radio, I'd pick, uh, you know, Satel 4SK, your data modulation has to match up. So if I was doing the internal radio, I'd pick the 16 FSK and match that up with the, uh, the exact channel, like we saw in the video. And that's how you can change the channel on, on the one watt GS16 base station or GS18, whichever you have, okay? And uh, when we edit it, we're outputting the RTCM3. So we're outputting RTCM3 data, and um, we have the rover picking up RTCM3 data, so that data type has to match up. The MSN is for the base station. It compacts it. Okay. Um, if this was, actually, I have to set for port one. So if this was a SATL radio, uh, if I edit it, device, I have GFU27 would be for the uh, SATL Easy Pro. And then the HPR3 would be the device for the SATL 4 Pro. And that's one way that we can also change the channel on that Satel base radio by hitting the control button right here. Okay. Once again, when you're in base mode, uh, when you're in here, you, this radio protocol is dictated on the actual, if it's the external Satel 4 Pro or Easy Pro, this is done on the actual radio itself. So I just want to show you how you can change the channel uh, on the base radio. Okay. We'll scroll down. Here's a picture of the base radio. And the uh, first one's the Easy Pro. And uh, it looks just like the 4 Pro, but see, uh, you'll see the little label up here. If I hit this button twice, uh, and I got the survey software programmed in here, this will put me into the frequencies, and then I can scroll up or down to change my frequency. That's another option. If I hit this button once, I can scroll down and change the data modulation. Uh, in this case, uh, the Easy Pro cannot use the 16 FSK or Satel 8 FSK mode. So we have to default and pick the Satel 3 AS, which lines up with the Satel 4 SK on the rover side. Okay. Um, so the 3 AS actually is you have the wrong baud rate, it should be 19.2. The 4 Pro has a different baud rate. So once again, like we saw earlier, uh, if I was going to set this up as the base station under radios, the device would be GFU27, and we could rename that to make it more easier to recognize. So once again, if you were using the Easy Pro um, 
on the rover, we'd have to have sat tail FSK, okay? And when we select that, because the eight FSK and 16 will not work, and you have an option here for error, forward error correction, FEC, on or off. Um, there's not too much of a difference in performance, but basically, once again, on the base, I could hit this button once or, and scroll down and put the FTC mode on or off, and that has to match. If it's on the base, we have to check it here. If it's not turned off, we have to uncheck it here. Otherwise, it won't work. So it's key. We have to write channel, the right frequency, and the right uh, data modulation and forward error correction. Those are key things. Now, the reason we change the channel is if we were getting stepped on. So if there's interference, that's when we want to come and change the channel. And it's a two-step process. Like we said earlier, we change on the rover and, and also change it on the base station. Now, if you have the um, SatTel 4 Pro, it looks exactly the same, but see the label here is different. It's 115.2 baud rate. And once again, when you're sitting up inside the CS20 at the base station, under your radio, it'd be the HPR3, and you see it says Sat Silent 4 Pro. The same way, if I'm changing channels, I'd hit this button twice, scroll down, change channels, and uh, the FCC set in defaults, uh, we can't change that, but that we can hit this button once, go to data modulation, and we can pick the SATL 16 FSK if you're doing full GNSS. The problem is the 4 Pro, they don't, with the chip shortage, right now they don't make these, so we're can only get the easy pro so once again moving forward uh, there might be some of these four pros out there hopefully later on we can get them on both of them you'll notice the voltage here so if you plug in your radio you need a 35 amp hour battery at least swap them out every year and with no load we should be seeing 12.913 volts with a load uh 12.5 12.4 so if you start seeing this voltage drop down to the 11s and definitely in the 10s, that's your sign to get a new battery, okay? So this is just, we'll have another video going to the base station set up, but just some quick tips on how to change your radio channels in the field, both on the base and the rover, whether the base is one watt or using a 35 watt set down, okay? So once again, if the GS-16 was the rover, um, we have a little light here. When the data comes in, we pump in every second. We pull on the CS-20, but these status lights are very helpful as well. And we've got to make sure we have the GAT-109 and GAT-2 plugged in here. Otherwise, we won't get any range, okay? Because uh, once again, it's a one watt radio. It could be transmit or receive. The same with the GS-18. We want to have the GAT-28 plugged in. Uh, this little icon of the radio on that port, plug it into this port. And on the front panel, you'll see this little light here blink every second when you're receiving RTK data. So these status lights are very helpful as well. All right, so this uh, is a G4 Geomatics team in Houston. It's myself, Jeff, and John helped with the video, and Ronald with Celia in GIS and service. And here's our contact information. If you have any assistance with your survey needs in the future, please feel free to reach out. Here's also the Leica support team. There's an 800 number and email uh, if you need any assistance. Well, thanks for paying attention. Hope you found this helpful.